Hey, what's up? Welcome to the latest edition of 5 Minutes of Management. As always, I'm Frank Collin here with Rick Bell. Rick, the Workforce Live Fall event season is officially over. We wrapped up Workforce Live San Francisco on September 22nd at the Ritz-Carlton. So now you can see videos from Workforce Live San Francisco, Workforce Live Dallas, and Workforce Live Chicago by the middle of October. If you check out our video library, uh, which you'll find through Workforce.com. It was a great series. Yeah, yeah a great series. No awesome doubt series. About it. Really lively event in San Francisco. We had great talks uh, from folks from Dropbox, uh, Glassdoor. It was just overall really great morning. Yeah, awesome. And we will be announcing on this very show the winners of the Optimus Awards, our 2016 Optimus Awards winners. We're going to do it on this show in November. So be stay tuned for details on that. So Frank, when does a bottle of juice cost $277,000? A bottle of juice from the Four Seasons? No. I don't know. Well, like that, that could be. I haven't bought one there in a while. But <laughs> no, it's when a hypoglycemic employee at Dollar General is denied, is, is told that she cannot drink juice at the register and ultimately she does drink that juice and winds up suing uh, Dollar General and wins $277,000. Hmm. So yeah, what happened was uh, she was alone at the counter and she went and took a bottle of juice out of the, the, free, the refrigerator that's right up in front, drank the juice, and then um, and, and it's called this, this thing called grazing. Well, the company found out about it. Even though she paid the money back immediately, she was ultimately fired for that. And then um, she sued through the EEOC and won the award. Next time you want to deny your employees uh, a, a bottle of juice for a buck sixty-nine, think about two hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars. Even, even though she paid for it, even that's the most remarkable. It. Yeah, thing. Wow. yeah. It's like it's like accommodate your employees. You know, it, it's it's a simple thing to do if you know that. And she declared that she's diabetic. They knew about it, uh, but yet uh, because of this grazing policy that they have, um, which is understandable. To an extent, but in this situation, yeah, it wound up costing Dollar General $277,000. Amazing. Well, Rick, in non-orange juice news, uh, the Obama administration is back at it, trying to do what it can to improve middle class families. Uh, the o administration announced this past Thursday that it had completed new requirements on businesses for providing employee pay data by gender and race and for federal contractors to offer paid sick days. So basically, the Obama administration, Rick, is saying, uh, if you're an employer, you have to disclose your pay data based on gender and race in an effort to kind of help uh, improve pay inequality by those demographics. Mm -hmm. And then it, they're also saying that if you're a federal contractor, uh, you have to give your employees paid sick days. You know, there's a transparency issue there, Frank, and, and, and it may not completely tell the full story. So. And, and, and unsurprisingly, uh, industry is against both of these measures. Uh, both requirements have stirred opposition from industry, the Wall Street Journal reports. Uh, companies warn the data collected could raise pay privacy concerns and be erroneous, particularly for smaller employers. They also say employers will have to provide pay data for extremely broad job categories without regard for varied job skills within each one. So. Companies trying to make the argument, yeah, okay, if we provide this data, it will tell part of the story around pay, but it won't necessarily uh, get to the heart of the issue when it comes to pay inequality. Yeah. I don't know who I believe, but at any rate, kudos to the Obama administration for doing what it can. Yep, exactly. Now, I understand you have a little nugget on uh, Wells Fargo. Yeah, so I think we would be a little remiss if we didn't talk about the Wells Fargo sham ac account scandal. Uh, by this point, everyone should be well aware of what happened. Essentially, uh, bankers at the bank uh, are rewarded for opening new customer accounts that's part of their incentive pay so unsurprisingly after a while people are kind of getting you know afraid that they're not going to hit their quota and they start opening fake accounts based on real customers and they don't tell these customers so if you have a bank account uh, maybe I'm a Wells Fargo banker and I open a credit card in your name without telling you about it uh, this culture kind of had became so pervasive the bank ultimately had to fire, I think it was 5,300 people at the end of the day, and they got slapped with a $185 million fine. Uh, this makes me think that we need to rethink commission-based pay. I think uh, after a while, especially on the individual level, 
you know, basing pay on commissions is just becoming more likely that this kind of behavior is going to happen. Well, there's unbelievable pressure on these people. I, I have a very good friend in banking, and I know the kind of pressures that she's under to sell, sell, sell. And it, 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 it's, it's an incredibly stressful situation. And I, I don't think it's necessarily fair to the employees. And certainly, it's all about the bottom line for these banks. And they, they're just putting it back on the employees. And I think seven times out of 10, most commission-based systems are going to work fabulously without a hitch. But is it really worth the, the, the one-third chance that this is going to happen? And you're going to basically incentivize your employees to, to do things that really maybe help their pocketbooks, but don't really help the firm's performance. The best thing I can liken it to is like in baseball, players get contracts with performance-based bonuses for hitting home runs, certain number of RBIs, but sometimes, you know, hitting 40 home runs may not always help the team perform, especially if near the end of the season, you've got a guy with 35 home runs who's just swinging for the fences every at bat. You know, he's hurting his team, even though he's trying to get that incentive. Sure, so that. not quite the same example as what happened at Wells Fargo, but I think at any rate, it should lead companies to sort of rethink how they design their commission-based pay, maybe to be more around team performance instead of individual performance. Yeah. All right. So quick quiz. All right. I got a quick quiz for you, Frank. So which healthcare organization recently rebranded itself? Is it the American Medical Association? Would it be the American Dental Association? Or would it be the National Business Coalition on Health? Uh, you know, I'm going to go with the American Dental Association. No, oh. it's, it's the NBCH, the National Business Coalition on Health, rebranded itself uh, just recently as the National Alliance of Healthcare Purchaser Coalitions, which is a little bit more of a mouthful and a couple more uh, <laughs> letters as an acronym. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, they've rebranded themselves. Uh, and, and, you know, it's just one of the many uh, business organizations involved with healthcare, And uh, I think it just sets them apart a little bit from the NBGH and the Pacific Business Group on Health and some of these other business coalitions uh, on health care. So uh, kudos to the uh, recently <laughs> renamed uh, the National Alliance on Healthcare Purchasers Coalition. So congratulations on the renaming. Ah, it makes me hungry for some alphabet soup. Oh, that's what man. I did. I'll tell you that. Okay. Well, that's all we've got for this week's edition of 5 Minutes of Management. For Rick Bell, I'm Frank Coleman. Be sure to subscribe to us, and we'll see you next time.